Last year, I bought two second-hand shirts and one brand new one. Guess, what is the number of new shirts an average consumer buys each year? And what does the number of shirts you and I buy have to do with our environment? Hello friends of facts and welcome to Fantastic Studies and Where to Find Them. Join us for some exciting research from scientific papers. If you like this video, learned anything from it, or would like to support us, please give us a thumbs up. Every like genuinely warms our hearts and motivates us to create more videos for you. In 2019, Pine and co-authors investigated the clothing consumption of an average German woman during one year. That immediately caught my attention as I asked myself, how do I compare to the average German consumer? We'll find out soon, but first. What is fast fashion? Have you ever heard of the term fast fashion? Fast refers to the incredible speed with which designs move from the drawboard to the stores today. Being so fast, brands can create a multitude of collections every year, quickly changing what is the latest fashion from week to week. Fashion brands now produce almost twice the amount of clothing compared to before the year 2000. In the US, a consumer statistically buys one new item of clothing every five and a half days. In Italy, Germany or Denmark, the average consumer buys about 15 kilograms of new clothes each year. In the UK, it's about 25 kilograms. That got me curious and I went into my closet to weigh some of my clothes. My jeans are 0.4 kilograms, an average shirt is 0.1 kilogram, and my thickest, heaviest pullover is 0.5 kilograms. The biggest consumer is the United States, where 85% of all clothes bought are dumped on landfills. Every year, every single US citizen thus throws away almost 40 kilograms of clothes. That implies they must have bought 47 kilograms. Fast fashion is only possible due to globalization, economic growth and the outsourcing of production to low and medium income countries. China and Bangladesh are the biggest producers and manufacturers of textiles and garments worldwide. Of course, in a world of infinite resources and impeccable social justice, there would not be an issue. However, this is not the world we live in. In our world, we play hidden social costs. Those include damage to the environment, human health and human rights. Fast fashion has a clear negative impact on the environment by causing CO2 emissions, water pollution and scarcity, and it is responsible for a noticeable share of chemical use. According to a 2020 Nature Review article, fashion industry causes 10% of global pollution. One pair of jeans, for example, is responsible for more than 10 kilograms of CO2 emissions. You could eat more than 800 servings of potatoes to emit the same amount of CO2, or drive more than 300 kilometers by train. Most of our clothes are made from polyester, and polyester is made from oil. No need to explain why that is an issue, right? Cotton, our second most popular fiber, is a natural product but requires extensive amounts of water for growing. This is especially problematic where cotton is grown in water-scarce regions. What's more, occupational safety is often not insured. Think about the 2013 Rana Plaza factory collapse in Bangladesh, for example. And it's not only about sewing. Chemicals used during fiber farming and cloth dyeing, if not regulated, can lead to life-threatening diseases such as lung cancer or damage to the unborn baby. Finally, we don't only dump our waste in European or American landfills, but we ship it back to those low-income countries. There, waste management is not as nicely and neatly organized and our clothes can end up polluting villages, forests, rivers and oceans. I think you got the point. Fast fashion is a global problem. But not only when it comes to the manufacturing of cloth and clothes. How we treat clothes once we purchase them matters as well. The authors try to capture the CO2 emissions and water use of the average German female consumer. 
To do so, they needed to know a lot. In a so-called life cycle assessment, they assessed what percentage of clothes is made up of what material, how much energy is required for sewing and factory maintenance, what is the local energy mix at the site of production, how and where to and from are clothes being transported, how often do we wash and iron our clothes, and what is the average German energy mix and its CO2 profile. The authors came up with two consumer profiles, a best case and the worst case consumer. The best case consumer drives to the shopping center by bike, washes only once per week, uses the dryer once every two weeks, and irons for one hour per month. The worst case consumer drives to the store by car once per month, washes and dries twice per week, and irons for eight hours every month. Now to the consumption behavior of the average German woman. The authors collected this information from databases, research projects and literature. To simplify things, they assumed that for each item purchased, we also discarded one item. Here's an overview of the number of purchases per garment and how long we usually keep them in our closets. If I don't count the two second-hand shirts I bought, my purchase of one new shirt last year is definitely below average. On average, every German woman buys five new shirts and blouses plus seven t-shirts every year. That implies somewhere in Germany last year there was a woman who bought 23 to average out my one shirt purchase. Because of the one item in and out assumption, we can multiply the number of purchases per year with the service life to estimate the size of the average female German's wardrobe. On average, every woman seems to currently possess 29 shirts, t-shirts and blouses. How many do you have? In this study, the number of items purchased, owned and disposed stayed fixed. What varied, depending on the scenario, was their use. The best case user, biking to the store, washing once per week and ironing only one hour per month, thus emitted 240 kg CO2 per year. The worst case user, driving to the store, washing and dyeing twice per week and ironing for 8 hours per month, emitted 530 kg CO2 per year. The difference between the two use scenarios for water use is much smaller, with 14 cubic meters in the best and 15 cubic meters in the worst case scenario. That is because water use is dominated by the production phase, with little influence for example by washing behavior. To illustrate the impact we as consumers have, the authors did not only estimate the average female German consumer profile, but also made assumptions on the extreme ends of the spectrum. A fashionista with twice the amount of purchased clothes and half the service life was estimated to cause 660 kilograms of CO2 emissions and 29 cubic meters of water use per year. An ecologist who purchased half the amount of clothes and uses them twice as long as the average German woman would only emit 130 kilograms CO2 and use 8 cubic meters of water. There really is no doubt. Our consumption of fashion has a mighty impact on the environment and social justice. But do we as consumers need to solve the issue alone? What can we do? And what can politicians and the industry do to help us? Experts suggest we need to move from a linear to a circular economy, which is characterized by efficiency, recycling and reuse. Business models can focus on repairing, renting and reselling clothes. In addition, industry could switch to sustainable fibers like Lyocell. Politicians could support the certification of social just production. They could also make sure that trade and taxation are linked to sustainability and social justice requirements. Consumers in high income countries can buy clothes that last longer, repair them and shop second hand. And we could optimize how often we wash and iron our clothes. In addition, Using sustainable energy further reduces our CO2 output. Ultimately, experts agree that we need to leave fast fashion behind us and make the shift to a modern day version of good old fashioned slow fashion. Let's sum it up. What is the number of new shirts an average consumer buys each year? On average, every German woman buys 12 items like shirts, t-shirts and blouses every year. 
And what does the number of shirts you and I buy have to do with our environment? Let's face it, a lot. Our clothes are the cause of CO2 emissions, water scarcity, chemical pollution and social injustice. But don't worry, you don't have to run around in beige linen to save the environment. A few years ago, I got addicted to the idea of an intentional wardrobe, which reflects my favorite personal style, contains items that fit and flatter my body, and which I love, not like, love to wear. Perhaps you'd like to learn more about capsule wardrobes as well. Here's an inspirational video I liked a lot. Another personal recommendation is this second video on linear versus circular economy. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Thank you.